guys. Thanks for joining me. It's Fred in Alaska. Uh, and thank you to whoever joined us last night on the radio show, Night Dreams Talk Radio. Uh, they'll have a link at their website uh, for anyone who missed it and wants to watch it. So feel free to do that. Their their link is in the, the previous couple of uh, videos I put out. So what I, what I wanted to share with you today um, comes from Priscilla. Uh, Priscilla self-proclaimed tag-along on what happened mid-90s uh, very traumatic situation uh, of how things played out so she tagged along to be basically help with everything around camp you know they were going to do some well she was just participating in someone else's adventure. We'll, we'll we'll leave it we'll leave it at that. So what ends up happening is is they get they're out Lake Beverly, Hard Luck Bay. Uh, I've been to that area. It's freaking beyond beautiful. I mean, gorgeous area. I mean, clear water down to the bottom, just gorgeous. Uh, it, it's it's hard to put into words how beautiful it is out there. So anyway she's on adventure status she she's going along for the ride tag along right and she was in her mid-20s uh very adventurous at that time uh it changed because of this so where they end up they park the skiff and they set up camp right the total is six people they set up camp and a couple of them are doing a uh a work related part of their trip where they happen to count salmon hatchlings and, and other stuff so they go up creeks and into bogs and they dip a net and they measure the fish and the species and so on so she was just tagging along while they were doing their stuff right so a couple people had stayed at camp and a group of four she was included go up this creek on the map you'll see a number one that is where they stopped the first day and there was some study done and the rain forced them back to camp Day two, number two, you'll see the blue dot further up the creek and you'll see a couple of red dots. I'll get to that in a second. So day two of this adventure she tagged along for, she ended up carrying some buckets and other equipment for the two guys that were doing their thing. Uh, her older brother was off her left hand shoulder and the two guys doing their job were in front of them. Her brother was a basically a chaperone, bear protection, so on. He had a shotgun and his handgun. And she had brought along a handgun, even though it was a 22 revolver, she felt safe it, it, initially. So they get back up in there, and right where that lake comes to this little creek, that this little feeder creek, there at that time there was the beginnings of a beaver dam and immediately the two guys that they were with they, they tore that you know the beginnings of it apart and the water started flowing and all that kind of stuff right so they sat back for a little while and just watching the guys do their stuff they're they're dipping this net into the water they're scooping out catching a few here a few there it, it was real slow going so they, it was she said it was like watching paint dry if it wasn't for the beauty of the scenery it they would have been bored to tears but there she was seeing stuff she never seen before the different species of trees and so on and so as they're she said they're about 50 60 feet from the mouth of this little creek where it starts where it's fed from this larger pond small lake right <laughs> she said they got bored watching these guys and decided they're gonna go up to the lake and just look around because it was just crystal clear water had a bluish tint to it that bluish green hue just gorgeous right and they get over there and that's when they see the two sasquatch the two hairy men across that lake and they're looking right back at them right immediately the older brother knew to get down he knew immediately that there's a hairy man over there and we got to not be here right and smart guy you know, uh, no sense in taking a risk. So one of the workers that they were accompanying and, and you know, they're with, they get their attention because this, this, these two guys were in the biology field. They start pointing, they start telling them, hey, look over there, look over there. The guys kind of look and they're just like, oh, you know, probably just some fishermen, you know, and, and they, they were really dismissive initially, 
initially they were dismissive like oh that's just other people no big deal you know it doesn't affect our study they their mind wasn't on what what Priscilla and her brother were trying to convey to them until the screams went down and immediately all eyes were that direction right so the the screams happen and that's when the two disappear into the trees on either side of this pond this this small lake one off to the right one off to the left just they disappear and they could hear you'll see on the map they could hear these things coming through the trees there was loud whoops uh there was stuff being thrown out into the water as they were coming branches breaking trees shaking just uh, just chaotic noise echoing down through loud as hell she said it went from dead quiet to like an orchestra playing just loud it, it was very powerful all the all the different uh whoops and and screams and whatnot so immediately everyone's puckered up right uh her brother unshouldered the shotgun and they start moving back uh, keeping an eye you know at the chaos coming their way they they weren't seeing much during that point just a lot of noise and the noise was coming towards them so they, as they're backing away she said they must have gotten maybe a hundred feet ish and by that point these two things were on opposite sides of where they were just standing they, they were on their end of the lake where they were doing the you know they're hanging out in the fish study going on they were there and they commenced to following them so they're retreating back out of there every every once in a while there's rocks landing by them there's pine cones landing by them uh they most of the vocalizations fell off she said once they were on the retreat understand this retreat is not just like you walking down a bike path and just do to do just you know get along real easy no this is thick underbrush thick grass you, you're not just traveling real easily through this shit you got on you got on hip waders you know you're going through mucky marshy stuff it it and especially trying to do it quickly you're falling a lot you're tripping over stuff it's it's panic riddled you know they're 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 trying to flee a perceived very dangerous situation um she said the further they got back away from that lake the less they were seeing these things and hearing them off to their both sides of them on their left and right just just behind them they're hearing these noises periodically and every once in a while when they'd slow down that's when the rocks would kind of rain down one or two sometimes a pine cone sometimes a stick would come flinging by uh basically they were being ushered out i mean that i mean that's what i pick up from it you know what i mean because these things easily could have overtaken them you know um it got to a point to where they were initially once they were getting closer back to the the lake shore she said that they were cut off at one point because one of these things was on their their back trail it had gone around them quietly unbeknownst to them and got in front of them and they all saw it peeking out from behind this tree just kind of watching them and again she said the they they couldn't really make out the faces because of how they were positioned and and the daylight and everything they couldn't really make out the face very clearly hold on here stupid light they couldn't make out the the face very clearly uh however the mannerisms was one she said of curiosity uh her brother when the one got in front of them as they were retreating he he leveled the gun at it and then they heard it tear off made some weird noises kind of like a gargling sound and and some whoops and some chirps real loud sharp whistles and some other stuff as it took off going up towards that little mound that little uh, mountain right next to that lake and once that happened they immediately picked up their pace because the trail got a little easier the ground was a little harder there they got onto the beach and they ended up walking along the beach quietly and slowly because the one that initially scared off when he leveled the gun at it they could hear it was either that one or the other one had crossed and you know joined them or whatever but they heard breaking trees uh she said it was some of the loudest stuff it sounded like it was so close to them like a tree was just gonna at any moment fall over right on them um even though that's you know unreasonable to think that you know a tree 100 feet back from the shoreline is gonna break onto you but it, it was just panic stricken right she said when they got to the camp um they had set up this camp nicely they they took their time she said the day before 
But when they got back to break camp because they weren't going to stay, they said, uh, well, she said it was chaos. Everything was thrown into the tent. Didn't matter. The uh, One of the guys was dragging the tent full of stuff over to the skiff. The tent tore. It, it, it was just, it was like a circus, right? So they scramble. They get everything into the skiff. Well, they they end up firing up the skiff and they they take off from shore and the guys once they're feeling more safe out on the water away from shore they said let's circle back let's see if we can see them out in the open they circled a few times and and saw nothing um at one point just as they're getting ready to leave they notice a dark spot way up on that mountain which was right there you know i mean it, it, you can't tell from the topographical but it's right there in your face you know when you're when you're at that beach it's right there and they saw one of them going up that and they just cut out from there um one of the things she also shared was is uh she learned that these guys uh, that they were with one of them actually had a camcorder and recorded some of this interaction this this retreat right um she said she found out through her brother because her brother was tight with those guys. They they lost their job. And the reason being they the the footage was confiscated, their notes, every everything done to document what they were experiencing, they turned it in. Like, hey, we, we need to change the study kind of deal, right? Well, they were fired for not completing the contract they had signed to do this study. So they didn't they didn't complete the project that they signed up for because of this circumstance that they're like hey look at this and they use that against them to basically hush them up i guess i i don't, I don't know what the end game is with that uh you know those in power you know stamping out any sign of evidence i don't know if it's fear i don't know if there's a protocol involved i i just don't know um but it's it's messed up to say the least to to use an experience against somebody as an excuse to fire them is, is just jacked up but it, it regardless it, it you know it's done it's done uh i want to thank priscilla for sharing um priscilla has a very severe fear of the woods um so much so that she can't go by a city park without looking for a hairy man peeking at her she she no longer lives in alaska um she she moved away decades ago um because of this particular instance um one of the things she shared that that caused her so much fear was she could tell they were watching her and not the guys the only she said the only time she felt like one of them had their attention on a guy was when her brother leveled the shotgun at it and it left you know they left their view into the trees she said the whole time from spotting them across the lake them coming around and them retreating out of there all the way up to when they were loading up the skiff she felt watched and she felt like she was their focus and she said she doesn't know how she just felt it in her spirit and it scared the living hell out of her and she swore off the woods from that point forward uh when she ended up getting back to anchorage after that trip uh she said it was less than a week where she she tidied up all her loose ends and went back to her home state uh i, I want to thank her for reaching out and being patient with the back and forth on the phones I really appreciate your patience, Priscilla, with the mapping and how I was working with you trying to pinpoint the spots and everything like that. I know it was a little annoying because, you know, it's kind of hard to relive some of those things, you know, because you get brought right back into the moment. So I, I appreciate that. I appreciate your efforts. Uh, un understand these, these experiences... Um, I talk to the people a bunch of different times uh, to get their information... Uh, if they're willing to share themselves, then, you know, I bring them on and they share. If they're not willing to share, I, I share for them vicariously. You know, I, you know, I share for them. Um, I want to thank Priscilla. Thank you for your patience. And thank you for sharing with everybody. And I'm sorry you, you can't go out in the woods anymore. But, I, I mean, to a certain extent, I understand. Uh, thanks for joining me. Bigfoot Society and Into the Fray, I'll be on their podcast sometime here in the near future. I'll keep you guys up to date on that. 
And again, thanks to Gary and James for having me on last night. And for all you guys who showed up and, and participated, I appreciate you. And we'll catch you guys on the next one.